everybody, this is Coburn C. Capsaw slash at Mr. Smiles a lot, and I'm doing another Let's Talk Media LLC video podcast with my good buddy here, Liam Garrett, his Irish name, uh, Liam Garrett, and I'm doing a video podcast because as you guys have seen on other social medias like my Instagram and my Facebook and my Facebook business page for Let's Talk Media LLC, I canceled my subscription to Spreaker because of the fact that I only have 45 minutes of recording time, so once that expires and I renew the subscription, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the pro plan, so that way I can record for as long as I want to, and I think with the pro plan you can actually do other features as well besides just like adjust the volume and things like that. So the reason I, I do not have him on camera is for professional reasons, and I'm trying to also respect his professional reasons even on the video podcast is between the two of us, obviously he's going to talk whenever you know we start going. But, you know, um, I believe in respecting your friend's wishes, whether that's friends, family, or just acquaintances. If, they, if they're willing to do something for you, but they have certain rules that they want, if they're willing to work with you, you should be willing to work with them. And he knows what I'm talking about. Too often people only want what's best for them, and they end up screwing people over. And that's not how you keep friends. So, it's good to see you again. How you been, man? I've been good, and you? Good. So I just wanted to say thank you again for the lesson yesterday. My voice is a little bit shot because of how well I sang. I'm not trying to brag. I'm being silly, you know me. Um, <laughs> so I just had a question. So considering how long it has been since I've seen you from working in law enforcement for so long now, um, I appreciate you actually saying, wow, your voice has changed and you've been working. And even just in the car, you know, that's still singing, but... Mm -hmm. From where I was before, and I know I've asked you this uh, a long time ago, but it's I think it's good to ask again because everyone's voices change over time, yes. and their talents change over time, you know, especially with age. So, what difference did you notice in my voice yesterday versus the past couple of times where you've seen improvements as well? I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that <coughs> that you have um, you've gotten more confidence, so you're not you're not behind the the note pushing it, you're letting it ride on the breath. And that relaxation, you're able to, to go from different registers smoothly without those bumps. And um, I, I just felt like you were enjoying singing more. You weren't fencing with it. You know, you were having fun and you were expressing and you were telling the story. It was just a, a much more pleasant experience for you and of course for the listener. Thank you. And the thing is that, <clears throat> you know, um, you have to feel it. Mm -hmm. You have to feel the music. And that's the thing is that, you know, some people, they're not the best singers in the world. But when you feel their emotions of what they're saying, that's what makes them a good singer. You want a good mm -hmm. example? Johnny Cash. He, he talked. Mm -hmm. But he talked in a singing way. And he put so much emotion behind his music, you're like... I hurt myself today. Don't copyright claim me, YouTube. But you get what I'm saying. Like that's. I mean, it's it's yes. it's a baritone. Um, would you call? Is that called talk singing? Well, there's a word for yeah, it. Yeah, it's right? called speak singing. Speak singing. Thank you. And, okay. Yeah. And you know, it's it's about whether you're speak singing or you're singing full out. As long as you, as long as you <clears> believe the story you're telling and you tell that story, the audience is going to buy into it because it's an enjoyable thing. Yeah. You know, if you really want to stop a child from running around and, and being a little beastie, you know, sit on the floor with a book and have have them come over and gather around you and you start to tell them a story. But if you don't tell that story like you believe it, you were there, it's, oh my gosh, I can't wait to share this with you. The children are, are not, they're not filtered and they will tell you like it is they will get bored really fast because they don't believe what you're doing, what mm -hmm. you're saying. You're just reading something. So you've got to believe, whether you're, whether you're singing to children or to you know, a room full of adults, whatever, you've got to tell the story. That's, that's kind of the whole purpose of going to a concert. You want to be lifted out of where you yeah. are and taken for that short period of time, whether it's one hour or three hours, you have be taken into a different place where there's no troubles, there's no worries, and you can just lose yourself in the enjoyment of listening to that artist mm -hmm. entertain you. Right. And, you know, that's 100% true, like, example. And I know he's using my example all the time. Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. That guy, electrifying. Mm -hmm. The emotion, the dancing, the singing, everything, like, 
yeah, he learned that from a young age. But even as a kid, it's not like I don't. I'm not saying he didn't feel it. But you know, when he when he was on stage, like it was, I can. There will never be another Michael Jackson. No. Just like there will be never never be another uh, the opera singer J- Javardi, right? Or how do you say his last name? The your favorite. He actually oh, uh, Pavarotti. Pavarotti. There right. won't be another him. There'll never be another Paul McCartney, John Lennon. There'll be never never be another Beach Boys. Another, Brian. Right. What I'm saying is that everyone has something to offer, mm-hmm. and you know, just because you might think, oh no, no that's talented as this other person, give it a chance. Mm-hmm. You never know if you're gonna like it or not. And the thing is that if you don't like it or don't agree with it, don't heckle someone else for liking it. And, and I feel like that's another problem in music or just anything in general and entertainment and life, you know, is that like, you know, example, I don't like seafood, but let's say we were out to dinner together and you sat there and you were having a lobster. Do you think I'd be like, ugh, you're nasty, you're gross, <laughs> you're, I don't know you, I'm better than you. No, I'd be like, you enjoy that, I'm going to eat my burger. I mean, I know, I know you're, I know you're a vegetarian, but you get what I'm saying. Like, if Absolutely. you like, you I mean, know, yeah, like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not out there. I have to, I just actually got it, got to being, I'm a full, full fledged vegan now. Vegan, sorry, but I know there's a the difference. But the thing about so. it is, is, is <clears throat> I don't require anybody that dines with me or shares a table with me to be a vegan. Right. They can sit there and eat a steak if they, if that's. I'm not out to change things by preaching at people. Mm-hmm. I just. I just made my choices, and my yeah. choices are, you know, I want to be a vegan. All right. It's the same thing with any of my my spiritual things, you know, beliefs, and, mm-hmm. and how I, you know, I do a lot of uh, meditation and things like this. I'm not going to walk in with somebody who is of another persuasion, uh, religiously, and and start heckling them and yeah. and trying to get them to. Well, you've got to see it this way. No, I don't got to see it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody has, they make your choices, and you make your choices wisely. You know, you can contemplate them, and you make your choices wisely. If you want to change somebody's mind, do it by example, not not preaching, not berating somebody for not believing like you. Yeah. It's, example is, you know... I hope this ties into it, but like I told you, I'm a little bit more, and when I say aggressive, I mean this with the kindness of heart. I'm a little bit more aggressive and stern with how I approach things when it comes to security. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as the, the interaction's over, I go back to being the fun, silly, you know, me. And that's why I think we're there, but that balance is where, you know, and I'm, again, I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. I mean, there might have been maybe a time where I've been a little too aggressive and maybe people, I wouldn't say they think I took things too far, but they might look at me like, oh, he's changed a little bit. But, you know, it's just part of the job, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's where, like you said, I'm, I'm trying to set the standard that, yes, you do need to be stern. And sometimes you do need to raise your voice. Sometimes you might have to curse at them and say, get the you-know-what out. But don't go to the level of threat, of threatening right away. Don't go to, I'm going to put my hands on you. Don't go to, I'm going to detain you unless I give you no probable cause or like, you know, you have, you know your supervisor whoever told you to don't you know there's always steps to certain things when it comes to security but then you also have to just like you know you're trying to de-escalate the situation you need to de-escalate yourself as well because if you don't de-escalate yourself and you're up there but the situation is down here mm-hmm. who's going to look bad mm-hmm. well where is it where's the situation going to go it's going to go up yep you know so if you go in hot headed yeah yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> you know, I mean, I learned that as a as a kid, you know, just yeah, seeing some of my some of my cousins would go into everything, and they were they go in fist first, <clears throat> fist swinging, and yeah. uh, you know, like this, I'm going, why? Yeah, <laughs> I, nobody beat upon me because I was always a, I was always this skinny little kid, so I get I think they thought I would break, but I would just observe this, and I'm thinking that could have been handled so differently. If you don't mind me asking, is that part of the reason why you started martial arts is because, now, I don't want to talk about family trauma. I mean, I'm not trying to get into that because I don't want to, you know, mm-hmm. make us, you know, I don't want to make it, I don't want to talk about family trauma, but 
were you ever afraid, if you don't mind me asking, were you ever afraid that maybe one day your brothers might get mad and try to put their hands on you? So you're like, I better learn some karate. Well, I don't have any brothers. I'm talking about my cousins. Cousins, right. Were well, you ever afraid kid. that your cousins would, so you're like, let me learn some martial arts, or just for the world. Like, the reason I started was just so I could protect myself, mm-hmm. and now protect my family, and, you know, protect those around me. And also, I just love martial arts. As you know, we, we talk about it before, mm-hmm. I talk about it all the time. Sorry, I'm a little obsessive about it, but when I'm saying, you get what I'm saying, so... Is that maybe part of the reason why? Because you were afraid maybe your cousins might hurt you, if you don't mind me asking? Not really, because I knew my grandpa would not take, let it happen. take him behind yeah, the right. barn and they well, would get served. Yeah, right. uh, no, really, the way the reason I went into martial arts was for the meditation part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I studied with a Japanese sensei, wow. and it was required that we spend time meditating, and he would walk around and... He knew the ones that were just sitting there with their eyes closed. <laughs> they got thumped, uh, you know. And the people that really were were feeling like they were getting some enlightenment from it. So, and I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the discipline of it, and I also in, enjoyed the structure. Um, but but the meditation is really what got me into it. And then just the just the practicing of of martial arts. It's it's a it's just an incredible just, feeling because it's fluid it's you know so that's 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 why I got into it. I literally would say half of who I am is because of martial arts the discipline the learning right from wrong learning to learn to fight so you don't have to learning to not and there's a respect yes yes that that's the thing is that again when I when I post my martial arts training videos I always say I'm not posting these to show off I'm not saying I can take on anybody, but I'm posting these to show you education on how you can defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Because through my martial arts videos, yes, what I'm showing might be violent. Yes, I am showing you how to hurt somebody, Mm -hmm. but it's through love. It's through integrity. It's through peace. It's through... Does that make any sense? Like I'm I'm showing you how to better yourself and protect yourself through in a weird way violence and you know well, what I mean like it's, in today's society there's so you know? many there's so much happening I mean, yeah just right here in in the St. Louis the, the crime rate is just ridiculous yeah and if you could teach somebody how to through a disciplined structured way defend themselves if there is bodily harm mm-hmm. being to, done to, to them or, or others loved ones, yep um, then I, I see nothing wrong with Right. You know, it doesn't mean every day I'm going to go out and I'm going to do a, <laughs> you know, I'm going to yell a key eye and then I'm going to like, you know, slam something <laughs> on the belt at the grocery what? store and demand a discount, <laughs> right? You right. Know, say, oh, oh, give me a discount. You know, no, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a thing we have to take care of. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing is that, um, you know, I'm very lucky and very fortunate that I'm as well trained as I am because, as you know, most security or law enforcement when it comes to that area, we are not well um, educated in hand-to-hand combat and that's why we get hurt a lot on the job and I know I have the upper hand you know that's why soon I'm thinking about offering you know me training our team if they're willing for me to become their instructor Mm -hmm. now I'm gonna talk to my you know the president of the company and be like look I I know you know I'll be like you don't have to pay me any extra because I want us to all be on the same page and I want us to all be safe and be protected you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, especially if I do apply for MICDS, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. if I do end up working for the school, you know, I would love to talk to the educators and be like, look, I don't know if you guys have a martial arts program, but if you would like me to teach your students how to protect themselves, you know, I'll gladly teach for free. Like, that's what I'm saying is that that's how much I love martial arts and how much I want to not just be a social media influencer, but just be a positive influencer. I'm willing to literally teach a whole school for free. What does that say? But... That's, that's I mean, a great deal. <laughs> I mean, you know, because it's usually the dollar sign comes first, and then I'll tell you what I'll do for that amount. Yeah. But no, you're you're uh, my heart's you're, in you're it. You're playing. You're paying it forward. Yeah, my heart's in it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, and um, and because of that discipline on how to deescalate, that's why I don't take things too far. And but I will tell you one thing though, because of that discipline, because of how deadly I know I can be. Again, not trying to say that I am or be like, oh, you did me. If something, if somebody were to do something, it's like, oh, yes. whatever. Let me put it this way: and you know what I'm, where I'm going with this. Whatever happens to them, I can't help them from there. Because if they throw a punch, you think I'm not going to defend myself? Of course. You think I'm not going to use everything that I know? My really? Yeah. I mean, if they're trying to 
seriously hurt me, well, guess what? I'm going to match what they're trying to come at me with. And that's a part of law enforcement, too. You match their level. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you don't have to be in law enforcement to know that. No. Let's say you're, like, you're taking, you know, Prince, you know, he's going to pop up, on a, like, little walk back there, and then you see somebody, like, staring at you from, like, the corner or something, like, standing on the side of the street, kind of looking funny. Yeah, you, I, I expect you to do something. If the you alarm know. goes off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right. And again, it's not that you want to be a violent person, but you have to yeah. think fight or flight. And you don't have to be well-educated in martial arts, but even knowing just how to do an eye gouge on someone's face with your fingers, mm -hmm. knowing how to hit them in the throat, knowing how to break their arm. What I'm saying is that a little can go a long way. And you don't want to be the, the lion jumping out of the cage, but sometimes you got to be. But as long as you go back to your cage, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing a lot of analogies, basically saying... Re reiterating, de-escalating yourself yeah. in the situation, but the the analogies make sense, right? Yes. So, uh, uh, but you know, I'm, we're talking about martial arts a lot. Um, I just wanted to uh, talk about you for a little bit and say thank you for everything that you've shown me when it comes to singing and acting. Like, I when I the reason I'm so comfortable right now is because of this guy across from me. I'm not kidding. Like, no joke. I I'm serious. Like, I, I've I, don't get me wrong, like, I start off with my first videos, and I'm, hmm, how they work, oh boy, versus now, and, you know, he's teaching me how to just relax, and how to be myself, and also showing me how to, like, I always try to not talk about controversial things, but if I do, do it in a way to where it's professional, it doesn't make other people mad, um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the confidence of learning how to, obviously, actually learning how to sing and use my voice, mm -hmm. because... I feel like that acting or being on camera and singing go together a long way and just, well, what I do for my social media purposes, but what I'm saying is that, um, and especially for our, our sessions of therapy where, you know, where we just sit there and I talk about my issues or whatever, I just wanted to sincerely say thank you because um, not a lot of uh, educators are as well-rounded as you. And you're, and you're very fair, you. and you're, you're very fair and you're honest, and that's what I love about you. Like, and you know, I'm not. And you know, if I hit a note wrong, I want you to tell me. But you say it in a way to where you're not like, oh, you're like, hey, you might want to tone that back. I'm like, I'm sorry. Okay, you know, <laughs> uh, what was that? My ears cannot hear this. This blasphemy. <laughs> uh, because I know you've had people like that, and you're just like, why? Why are you? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just again want to say thank you. Um, and I'm not just saying this for the camera, you know. Uh, I value every session that I can get with this guy because of how busy I am. So thank you for fitting me in yesterday and today. And as Watch. you and as you all know, the re so you saw me with the cute picture of my little Jack Jack. But the reason I don't usually post videos of me singing much anymore is because of copyright claims, and you know all about oh, yeah. that and how YouTube has become recently. We got about good, I would say, ten minutes left. Um, Real quick, and I might even make a video about this myself, but uh, recently, I don't know if you've seen this, but on YouTube, things have been a little bit finicky with the algorithm and with people getting age-restricted and monetized versus demonetized, and how um, they might be a little bit um, prejudiced towards their African-American creators versus their uh, Caucasian creators. Did you, have you been seeing that lately or I heard have, about that? I have. That, that, what that what do you think about that? I want your opinion about yeah, that. Somebody else brought that to, to yeah. light to me also. I just wish that there could be an us in the United States again. Right. It's, uh, it's supposed to be the United States of America and there's there's us. There's, you know, there's so much, yeah. there's just so much diversity that is put in boxes. Nobody, nobody blends anymore. Right. It's, 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 there's, there's no acceptance of someone that is different and maybe trying to learn something from that person. Right. Oh no, we can't do that. No, because we're right. Well. There is no we're right, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. There's, there's got to be gray areas. So here's a good example. There's this game that's really popular. It's called the Mortuary Assistant, and there's certain very suggestive, very 
you know, adult themes in it because mm-hmm. you're a mortuary assistant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's possession, there's talks of the S word. I'm mm-hmm. going before YouTube, I'm not going to say it, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, and so, like, example, one of my other favorite YouTubers, Markiplier, versus Corey Kenson, who's one of my other favorite YouTubers. So, his got age restricted, and, you know, because he said he's African American, his views were all weird, and then he was, and the Markiplier's like, where's my age restriction? So, instead of, like, just green lighting it, they just give him one. It's like, really? That's not how you solve things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know that because the other, my other favorite YouTuber, Jacksepticeye, um, Sean McLaughlin, he's actually an Irish YouTuber, one of my mm-hmm. favorites. I'll send you some of his links. Real funny guy. Um, McLaughlin, very, very Irish lesson. Um, he had talked about it, and he was like, yeah, why did they do that? Like, a lot, a lot of the uh, very popular YouTubers are talking about it, and I'm not popular in any way, but I'm also thinking, like, I'm Asian and Caucasian. My videos do okay. I'm pretty much a nobody, but it makes me wonder, if I blew up, how much would that play against me? Or am I not making the content that other people really want to see, even though that I feel like it's along the lines of what other people do want to see? Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, or, like, example, Sean said, like, you know, he'll take, when he took a vacation for a little bit, and he wasn't uploading as much, some of his views got, uh, got lowered. Mm-hmm. And then when he came back, they got up again. He was like, just because I'm gone, that does not mean that should uh, dictate on how my videos do. And he was like, that's where YouTube's will be being a little bit unfair as well. And, you know, it's just the age restriction, getting demonetized. Uh, everything in general. Like, I, I don't, I, I can't remember exactly the full thing as to how they tied in the, uh, the um, uh, race thing into it with Corey Kenson. But you'd have to watch his video. I, I, I have yet to watch it because I've watched other people reacting to his video. Mm-hmm. So at some point I'm going to end up watching his own video from his perspective. And then if I feel like I need to make a video myself, then I'll be like, okay, I can see where it's coming from. This is a problem. Because, yeah. I mean, everybody's talking about it right now. Even yeah. you said one of your students yeah. said something to you about it. So, I mean, that only shows, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm afraid that that's going to make some of my favorite YouTubers I love watching step away from the platform. And I don't want that to happen. Well, we've gotten to this judgment thing that is, like, everybody has to pass. It's like, it's like running through the... Um, uh, what is the line you used to have to run through? And as you run through, it was a it was a particular uh, thing. You as you're running through, people are hitting you with sticks. And if you can get all the way through and get to the other side, then you pass that initiation. Um, sort of like hazing, but in a much different kind of way. Right. right. Well, not really sometimes. But um, it, it's it's everybody is is. To me, when I when I watch I watch very little news anymore because it's just damn depressing and it upsets me when I see things and what people say I have I have friends that are all ethnicities I have friends that also religiously Hindu Muslim uh, Catholic Greek or Orthodox I mean you you know, I've got so many people that are our friends and the friends of mine because I met them through the years for a lot of years of traveling all over, all over the world mm-hmm. and I learned something from each one of them it doesn't mean because you are not that just because I don't go to that church does not mean I can't learn something mm-hmm. just because I don't understand that culture well then talk to me I, if I close you away, I'm never going to learn anything about that. Open the door and learn from. You might wind up being enlightened. Mm-hmm. You might go, oh my gosh, I always had the concept that you all were this way. And I feel like the only stipulation, and I agree with you, but I feel like the only stipulation you need to watch out for, I think in I think stipulation is the right, right word. Make sure you look out for the people that don't push it on you, though. Well, that's the thing I'm saying about yeah. being vegan. I don't push that on everyone. Right, I'm right. Saying, well, if you yeah. well, if you go with said, you know, go to the dinner with me, you, you've got to eat. You've got to eat grass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like example, accepting so. people who are you know bisexual, such as you don't mind me saying yourself. I accept you for who you are because I love who you are. Like you're, uh, Garrett. I, I, I know I've already said all those nice things about you, but I can't say enough nice things about you. And I'm being serious. No, seriously. Like I accept you for who you are. Right? I accept the LGBT plus 
community. Is that what it is? LGBT plus Q. Yeah. I guess. Right. But I accept them for who they are, you know. And, and but you know, and I accept you know, uh, not gays as well. I accept anyone who's cool. I accept anyone who's just down to earth. You know what I'm saying? But I will say this: if you want to like come in my face and push it on me, it's not that I'm gonna be like, oh, get on my face. But I'm gonna be like, can you, you know, like, like you said, talk to me first before you're like. If you don't accept me, you're a, you're a bigoter. If you don't accept me, you're this. If you don't call me by this pronoun, or and I'm like, again, again, me saying this, by the way, I'm not attacking anyone in that community, but I'm just being honest. When they throw it in your face, mm -hmm. that's what makes us retract. We're trying to accept it. Okay, especially, like you said, if we don't understand it, it's not that we're uncomfortable. We just don't know. So talk to us. Don't... Rah, rah, rah. Uh, uh, I just think feet. the first thing is like step away from the being aggressive yeah. in your beliefs. You're only going to get somebody else's back arched. Right. It's like go in with a, a an idea of can we have a conversation? Safer. And a conversation has to be both both ways. Mm -hmm. You can't just say okay we're having a conversation and and you're only going to listen to me because I don't want to hear what you have to say. That's not a conversation. <laughs> and and that's the problem we're having with the communication between political parties, between religious leaders, everything. We're just mm -hmm. having that. Yep. It's got to be my way or the highway. That has never, ever worked yep. in anything. And even if you don't agree on everything, you can still be friends at the end of the day. Absolutely. Like, I, you have no idea how many times a friend of mine will say something and I'm like, uh, but do I hate them right away and say, oh, I'm not your friend anymore? No. Oddly enough, at some point, eventually, after I think about why they feel that way about a certain mm -hmm. thing, I'll, I'll think about it and be like, okay, I can understand it. I might not accept it, mm -hmm. but I'm like, okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. I can see where you're coming from. I, I disagree with you as a, in that particular facet, but I still like you as a human being. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be either or. Right. And that's the thing we're doing these days, I feel, is that you either, you either do this or you're my enemy. And I made a, uh, I made a food for thought post about this, and you'll remember exactly what I'm talking about. It's so true. Everyone has a right to their own entitlement, but that does not make you entitled uh, to how you treat other people. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're entitled to your own opinion. Everybody's but, right. It has a yeah. right to their own opinion, but that doesn't mean, mean you your get opinion. To tell me what my opinion Ex should be. That's what I was trying to say. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I mixed up the wording a little bit. <laughs> it's like I said, it's been a while since I've seen that food for thought post. I think I might have posted like a year ago, maybe. But no, it's true though. Yeah, no, you're you're entitled to your opinion, but your opinion doesn't mean you're entitled to tell other people their. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. Exactly, and that's that's all you see on these talk shows. Yeah. And uh, news shows, and it just. You're inundated with this, so that's why I just, you know, yep. I, I I choose I choose which what I'm going to watch for news, and and basically the minute they start getting off kilter and going into one of their tangents, I'm like, no, mm -hmm. that's that's never going to solve anything. It's no. like a meeting over the table and having a true conversation can get someone someplace. You know, Sharing of ideas. You know, what makes it even better is if you if is if you talk out what you disagree on. So then that way you can be mm -hmm. like, okay, now I see, you know what I'm saying? So then that way you're not feeling weird about each other, you're not mad at one another. Mm -hmm. And also if you both disagree on something, and I know this goes like, way well, easier said than done, don't do it over a text message. For the love of God, that's how things get very misconstrued and you're gonna end up getting a You cannot hear the tone of someone's voice over a text message. If you really wanna say something, pick up the phone. Right. Say, hey, can we have lunch? know something I want to talk to you about that I'm not sure you meant to say the way you said it or can we just have lunch and talk yeah I don't know about what that's <laughs> what's fun when I go to lunch with my friends it's like I have no idea what we're going to talk about right sometimes we just have fun and talk nonsense and the other times it's it, I, I go away going wow that was a great yeah. get together you know and it can and uh, why we should wrap things up after this but one little thing it's, it can be as simple as like back when I used to imitate other singers' voices, and I used to think, well, if, before I might find my own voice, I'd ask you like, what if I sing this part like them to help hit those notes? And you say, nope, and I'd be like, well, what if I did this with my voice? Nope. What if I nope, nope, nope? And I never once was like, oh, this guy's you know, 
blah, 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 trying to censor myself here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but you get what I'm saying. I never thought like, yeah. oh, who, you know, and, and everything that you've taught me, I've learned and took it in and, you know, not trying to brag, but like you were like yesterday, you see where I was with it. Yeah. Even knowing that we barely see each other, but I'm like, okay, mask, keep the voice forward, let the breath carry it, don't push. Sometimes you might have to replace a word with another word if you can't get your voice fully out there. So it's just saying like, ooh, you know, because sometimes like that, ooh, that can close up your throat. Mm-hmm. You say who, put an H in front of it, mm-hmm. opens up the throat more. See, that's what I'm saying. Like you take those little things, because I actually listen to you. Now, and as opposed to, I mean, we're not going to use names to be professional, but that student you told me with their parents standing right there behind them, you literally ripped up the check in front of the parents and the student, you said, get out of my door. Because they thought they were better than you, and they, yeah, like that's, come on now, come mm-hmm. on, really, <laughs> yeah, and like that's what I mean by like, you didn't agree with the way I sang, and I appreciate that because of how it is now, and I never took it as an oh like I know what I'm doing, and he, do, you know what I'm saying, and you don't have to have a massive big fancy studio, to be successful, because I've learned so I'd rather come to you. Because of how real you are and how real the setting is versus a studio where all the walls are white, there's nothing but cameras, and the person's more focused on taking pictures of themselves and educating me. Mm-hmm. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Or they'd rather go and studio themselves and then, like, show off to me that they can sing. And I'm like, can you let me in the studio, too? And <laughs> like, I'm, I'm paying. It's like, hey, I'm paying. Can I sing, too? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you again, thank Mr. You. Liam States. And again, this has been Coburnsy Caps Off slash at Mr. Smiles a lot with another Let's Talk Media LLC video podcast. If you need a marketer or advertiser, if you live in St. Louis, if you need a martial arts coach, if you would like to do any photography or videography, um, whatever with me, grow your business from point A to point B. Uh, if you need a, a wedding photographer uh, if you need me to do anything like graduation wise basically I'm, I'm all around whatever you need me to do when it comes to you know getting out there who you are anyway thank you all so much for watching I love you all so much <laughs>